This week on Motorway, the weapons of road rage. Naughty nights with the dead dog squad. And he'll be wearing this about three. <laughs> and it's the end of the road for Frank. It's the night shift, and D unit's tea break is rudely interrupted. So there's been an incident on the M5, some in the vicinity of junctions three to junction one, where um, a, f a lone female driving a Peugeot 309 has been seen to point what has been described as a firearm out of the window of the vehicle and fired two shots at a Tufnell's lorry. What I want to do is, rather than, than get your lot involved in this, because obviously it's all happened on the motorway, is send one of my crews, my supervision, and a Julie Tango vehicle up to the address and play it by ear. I would think that what will probably happen is that this lady, if she's in, will be nicked under the Firearms Act, and then we'll turn this over and the vehicle to see if we can find the weapon. Are you happy just to lock the door and we'll be uh, parked nearby? Yeah, no problem. With backup from the Tactical Firearms Division, officers speed across the city to interview their gun-wielding suspect. I don't know about my colleague, but at this stage I can't say I'm feeling too threatened or concerned, but at the end of the day you've still got to keep your wits about you and be aware that something could go wrong, and for the one time out of a hundred, it could be genuine. The woman suspect is arrested and led away for questioning. She's let some down, no problem. She's been asked if she's been on the M5. She's been on the M5, and we've said uh, about the incident with the gun. She's volunteered uh, the weapon, shared us the weapon, which we've got back now. It's a replica Walther handgun, gas powered, uses CO2 to power its projectiles, and actually fires a pellet, so it's in effect like an air pistol. She's now been arrested under the Firearms Act for possessing the weapon with intent to cause fear of violence to another British person. And we'll take them all into the police station and we'll deal with it. The policy normally is for first time offenders a caution. I mean, this is slightly different than a shoplifter or that sort of thing. But I don't see any reason why she couldn't get a caution at the end of the day. Down in the cells, everything is not as it seems. The female suspect is in fact a man in the middle of a sex change. There is an RTA southbound on the M6, just south of Junction 5. We're believing to be a non-injury. We're making our way south now, just through Gravel Hill, until we see it. Even 
in the middle of the night, there's no respite from road traffic accidents. Yeah. So then the kids started screaming to go to the toilet and everything, and she was pulling in, and then one of the kids, I think, it was pulled her hair or something to get her attention. The kids was in the back, and they were screaming to go to the toilet and that. Uh, and pull in. Next minute, someone else crashed into there. Take up the strain, Mick. Martin, do you want to jump in and get your foot on the foot brake, save it rolling out? Miraculously, the young yeah. family escaped unscathed, even though their car had vaulted the crash barrier. Because oh. the steering's going to go that way. Hold on, Mick. I've seen your driver's license. Have you got a pilot's license? <laughs> OK, nice and gently. That'll do you. Backwards. OK? I should like to just look at that for a moment. It could be much worse because cars can always be repaired and people can't. Would appear all the children were strapped in quite safely. No one's hurt. But uh, the lady's concerned now. She wants to know if the vehicle is drivable. What do you it's, think? Uh, <laughs> it's certainly not now. The exhaust has fallen off. A speeder has careered into the path of two other cars, causing serious injury. Fearing that drink is involved, officers' patience wears thin. Out of a blue we, we just pulled out of the blue anchor. Right. And as I was pulling out, I could see him up coming to overtake the car with the police van behind, so I yeah. stopped quick. How old's the baby? Four months. So as you were pulling out, it would have hit the baby first. It would have hit, yeah, it would have hit there first. Yeah. 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 Pissed as a fart at it, absolutely. If you can manage to walk past and have a sniff, you don't really need any more. All you've got to do is keep your fingers crossed that the hospital will let him give blood. So you never drink and drive, and now you know why. If it turns out that he is drunk, he's in no fit state to drive a vehicle in the manner he's been driving and also at the speed he's been driving. Could have killed somebody. No sympathy with him at all. It's the bank holiday weekend, and a lorry has shed a load of metal all over the motorway, adding to the chaos. We've got approximately uh, three tonnes of iron bar, all in manageable pieces. If we get a council crew out uh, to remove it from the hard shoulder, uh, treat it as a matter of urgency, please. The metal bars won't be there for long, but when one problem's solved, along Lads, comes another. Can you walk down this side, eh? Oh, my God. There's a car there using a beam, you know. So pulling that off the carriageway. Yeah, come on off. Thank you. The white car coming on this outside lane and using a laser beam into my eyes. And I had to get into the centre then on yeah. I've got his number. Four of them, four big lads and they were uh, signing everything for no reason at all. I was doing nothing wrong on the road. Yeah. I was coming along here on the on the you know, doing normal, normal 60, 65, 70. And they beamed my eyes with them laser beams. Yeah. So I got his number and I said I'll report him to the police with a shot straight off. Have, have you got that? Just give me the number. number. Yeah, it really scared well, me. Whatever happens, yet. don't stop in the lane again. Oh, sorry, I didn't know, yeah. I might end up dead or yourself. Yeah. yeah. This, not... this car's hit things. Oh, God, I didn't know. OK. It really, really frightened me. If we come across them, we might have to get in touch with you. Right, it really frightened me to death. And there were four big lads and all in, you know, and they scared me. You know, yeah. They're using that beam on me and I just didn't... OK. We've got to jump back in, get on your way, cos it's safer going than that. All right? But don't do that again, whatever you do. Yeah, sorry. Come 
Come on, get going. Come on. In part two, it's the end of the road for Frank. You can't always explain why you love something. This is it. I'm going to love it. What is it, 120 is a Yeah, half a mile at this rate. Sometime tomorrow morning. But some families never get sick of the sight of the M6. Motorway's no problem to us at all. It's private. Uh, the noise doesn't bother us. But next door, it's a different story. Well, the family moved into this house in September 1937, just 60 years ago. The house was bought by our family in that year because of its beautiful rural views and very quiet location, as you can see from this photograph, 1928. And now we've gone from that, peace and quiet, to that roaring motorway, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. High Street, where there's traffic actually on your doorstep. My children can play out the front, they can step into the road and they're safe, there is no traffic at all. Friends are coming to visit us, they ask us what the motorway's like, you know, maybe going up north or coming down, and uh, we just look out the window and tell them what the traffic's like, if it's free or if it's busy. We've been going four and a half hours, and we're all still pretty sane. Oh, yes, thank God for that. Yes, 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 huh? yes, yes. Thank God for that. Last day. It's the end of the road for Frank Gallia and his partner, Chaz Perry. It's Frank's last day at the wheel before he retires, and it's a chance to reminisce. One of the incidents I dealt with recently, and I'm going back probably 12, 18 months ago, was when we had a report of a swan landing on the M6 by the motorway control centre. We pulls up by it, I goes out with a yellow coat, goes to throw it on the swan, and he takes off and lands on the southbound. So he climbs over the barrier, chasing us again, and we're going from northbound to southbound all the while. At the end of the day, it suddenly takes off and flies away. Wildlife's not a rare sight on the Midlands motorways. In fact, there's a sanctuary for injured birds alongside the M5. Take these broken wings and learn to fly again. Learn to live so free. When we hear... That's a good boy. You're very quiet, aren't you? Maybe the motorway or the road is wet and shiny. The swan will imagine that it's water. His eyesight's not that brilliant. And instead of coming in for a nice, splashy landing, he comes down with a thump. If he's lucky, he gets away with it, but often we get severe injuries. The police ring up and say, Jan, there's a swan on the motorway. 
uh, and all the traffic has stopped, I usually say, well, why don't you go and get it? Pick it up and they are not always too happy about this because swans have this reputation for being fierce things. We're off there today to gain some instruction on how to recover large injured birds that are lying on the motorway. It's a bit of an unknown quantity for us at the moment. I was mentioned we were going on this swan catching course because we're good at ducking and diving. Oh, we've had all the usual jokes coming through, yes. And, uh, goosing and keeping one's pecker up and all the rest of it. I've no doubt that afterwards we'll get even more. Well, those are what you can buy, thank you. Okay. Yeah. We'll just have the tame ones, thank you. Oh, yeah. Has she got any still in eggs? They look very peaceful now. Don't they? What I'm going to do is just go and pick one up, just so that you can see what it feels like. If you want to just say hello to him, so that you know that he isn't the big fierce chap that you think he is. Obviously, this is only a young he made that look very easy. And he's not very fit. <laughs> OK, who's going to be first? They discussed in another way. <laughs> another satisfied Can customer. You ever do that to me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I retired at 2 o'clock this afternoon after 30 years in the police force. I've thoroughly enjoyed every single minute on the motorway. Don't forget on the motorway, every day is a different day. You deal with something entirely different all the while. Get your hand on the steamer. What's wrong with you today? I'm asleep. I won't miss the job because the job has changed so dramatically. I've just made the decision that it. now is the time for me to go. And it's just about right. I'm going on a high. Would you change anything, Frank? Would you just change, change anything? Just change my Other than your underpants? No. Yeah, well, I'm due to go today, aren't I? I'll tell you that much now. Yeah? I'm going to upset Mr Austin. I've known Frank for four and a half years, and I must admit, um, the fact that he's retiring is, uh, is quite sad. He's one of those characters that uh, are somewhat irreplaceable. Uh, I'm sure that the officer who's coming in to fill his shoes will be a credit to us, but Frank is, uh, is, is somewhat special. Promise me you're going to have a shave next time. One minute later. You were late this morning, Frank. There's your card. Still doing right, it. Right, thank you very much. Is that the Frankie one? No, <laughs> oh, well, one of them, an orange one. Actually, it's a gobstopper where they couldn't pull one big enough. <laughs> <laughs> For Frank, there'll be one more surprise. He's a good bloke, and I'm going to miss him a lot. And this has turned out to be a, a good day for him. Colleagues have organised an extra special leaving present. It's one last trip down the M6, but this time 
in a helicopter. Next week on Motorway. No bullshit, none of this. F***ing nifty, all right? A tantrum in the traffic for Steve and Keir. Things hot up for Paul. And it's burning rubber Mick has to worry about. Motorway is back next Tuesday night at half past ten.